Hello everybody, welcome to another installment of Biology in the Basement with your host, Mr. Andrako, special guest edition, Amphibians by Kayla and Valerie. So we'll get started talking about them. We don't have too many more to go, right? Just uh, reptiles and birds and mammals, I think. So we'll, um, we'll be done with this in no time. So uh, here's your fact of the day so that we can get started. There's a beetle, you may have heard of him, called the bombardier beetle. The bombardier beetle holds two different chemicals inside of its abdomen, uh, hydroquinone and uh, hydrogen peroxide. And when threatened, they can combine those two liquids and spray them out of their body, and it reaches boiling temperatures to fight off um, any... Uh, attackers. So it's pretty interesting adaptation to fight off um, predators. So there's your fact of the day. Let's talk about amphibians. I wonder if an amphibian has been um, attacked by a bombardier beetle. Okay, so for my um, grading, right, that I need, but also for your understanding, here is their classification. Obviously, these are eukaryotic cells. We are talking about animals. They are chordates, meaning they have a spinal cord. Then, of course, subphylum vertebrata, meaning there's a backbone surrounding that spinal cord. These guys are in the class amphibia. Okay, amphibians are a class, so that's how specific we get for these guys. And then the... Um, Subgroups are their three orders, Anura, Eurodelia, and Apoda, which is an interesting term, meaning apod, no feet. So here is your definition uh, for migrating, but you can also pull out of here, they have uh, multi-cells, they are vertebrates with an internal skeleton. So I think that covers the uh, first three, right, multi-celled uh, vertebrates with an internal skeleton. Here are their subgroups that we'd like to include. Uh, most of you, when you think of amphibians, you think of the two main ones, the frogs and toads, which is called anura, and the... Um, salamanders and newts, which are called the Eurodelia, but there's a third group, Apoda, no feet, and they just look like these worm things. Very disgusting. Uh, there's a few species out there, uh, not as common as the other two, but uh, kind of gross. Okay, so back to your slides here. We've got the nervous system. They do have a brain. They have the spinal cord, and they have, un they have nerves. So this is where we're starting to get into some pretty complex species, as you can see with these nice diagrams here. They cover that there's a brain, a spinal cord, and nerves. Um, so they have... Um, the ability to respond to touch, but of course, as we know, their other sense organs are hearing, seeing, they have all five senses, pretty much, so that's probably what I would put for your sensory organs. Respiratory system, uh, they can breathe through gills, they can breathe through their um, lungs, or they can breathe through um, their skin, so they actually have uh, three different modes of respiration, so you can include that. Okay, for my information, right, I want to know about nutrition and habitat, so here is their nutrition, right? Most of them are carnivores eating insects, other small animals. Uh, their digestive system, you can put the word continuous, right, where it goes in one end and out the other, and that's a nice uh, diagram. You can see it's similar to ours, not as complex, but pretty close. Circulatory system here, we're talking about a uh, two and three chambered heart, depending on the species. And so, um, right, right, atrium, left atrium, 
I don't think they have any ventricles in this one, right? So sometimes they have a two or three chamber heart. I think most of them is two, right? Anyways, um, they have a closed circulatory system. That's another term that we have been using, meaning this travels in tubes. I never like the blood vessels thing. You'll hear my rant about that later. Blood tubes. Okay, things that I want from you in your assignment that they also covered very nicely is habitat adaptations, right? Their habitat, of course, needs to be in some kind of moist environment. They live a double life uh, where part of their life is in water and part is uh, somewhat land. And so they need to be somewhere where there is moisture available. Um, as far as their adaptations, they have all kinds of cool adaptations where they have uh, cool eye muscles as well as um, their uh, tympanic membrane. Some can even shoot their tongues out, right, to catch things. Lots of great <coughs> adaptations in amphibians. As far as fertilization goes, right, they do have both internal and external fertilization. Um, so you could do that. I would say mostly external. Um, here are some pictures of the eggs where usually the female releases the eggs and then the male fertilizes them outside of the body right on site. Um, so that's why they uh, don't have a shell so that the sperm can still get in. All right, here are some examples. Right? They picked some really good ones. Tiger salamander, marbled salamander, and here's one of your Sicilians. Uh, oh, two of them. Ugh. I don't know why they creep me out. They're not snakes or worms. I, I don't know. That. Poison dart frog, of course, one very common one. And I don't know if Frank is covering up Amazon horn frog. If you want to see a frog with some personality, the Amazon horn frog, he sure does. Um, so they uh, attach their crossword puzzle to the slideshow, which is okay with me. Um, but if you send it separate, either way was really fine. They asked if it was okay, and I said, sure. So here's another um, part of their slideshow that is also part of the assignment, which is the crossword. So if you have not sent in your crosswords, do that now. Okay, uh, great job, Val and Kayla. You'll see me back shortly talking about, I don't know, reptiles or something. Okay, take care.